Hey guys, for those of you who don't know, my name is Judah Voth, and the verse I have for today is Leviticus 26, 12. And I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. This verse is coming from a passage where um, God is telling the Israelites what blessings they will receive if they are obedient and they follow, follow his commands. And the thing that sticks out to me the most is that he says, I will walk among you. And I guess that kind of shows that God really wants to have a personal relationship with us. When you think of going on a walk with someone, you don't, you give them your full attention. So it's like, you go on a walk and you're like, hey, I want to spend time with you. And I want to say, you're important and I want to know more about you. And so that's what God's saying here. He's saying, I, I want to walk with you. And that just, it speaks to me because it shows he really wants a personal relationship to us. But it's not only he's gonna walk with us. For him to walk with us, we have to make the decision to walk with him. And that means we have to take time out of our lives and give it to him and just say, hey, God, I wanna spend time with you. I wanna to get to know you more. Um, when I was thinking about this, I was inspired to write a poem. So I'm gonna read that all for you. This poem is called, Why I Hike Alone. I follow the path deep into the trees, alone, but not without company. I tell you about my day my troubles and my pleasures. You listen intently, acknowledging without a word. Some people wonder, why do you hike alone? But I'm not alone, for he is with me. He will never leave me. All he asks is that I give him what little time I have. And that is why I hike alone. Thank you all for listening. I come in simplicity, longing for purity, to worship you in spirit and truth, only you, Lord, strip it all. I'm coming back to my first love, only you. Enjoy the reason I see, the reason I see, yes, my
Yes, my young How I love you How I love you How I love you How I love you The reason I sing, yes, my heart will sing how I love you, and forever I'll sing for. Yes, my heart will sing how I love you.
Hello Bethel Camp family, how's everybody doing today? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. That should cover everything. Alright guys, I'm glad to be with you all, sharing you a little word from God's word tonight. Just a few things I have. I believe I've spoke on this message before, but if I have, that's okay. If I haven't, that's alright as well. Uh, I'm going to apologize if you hear some background noise. That's cars going by, I live by road, so that's what that is if you hear any. But yeah, I just want to hop right into it tonight. So I hope y'all have been doing good throughout this coronavirus pandemic thing. How many can agree with me that it's a crisis? Yeah, everybody can, right? So tonight, uh, this evening, whatever it is at your place, or whenever you're watching this, I want to talk about just for a few minutes how to deal with a crisis and this is actually something that my algebra te teacher taught me one time when I was in school and it was super cool and it stuck with me all throughout all throughout my life I'm glad he shared it with me so what is a crisis I looked that word up the definition of a crisis is a time of intense difficulty trouble or danger that can change the balance of life we usually think of a crisis as something being bad that happens to us. We have all experienced a crisis in our lives. And it doesn't even have to be this coronavirus. A relative dying, that could be a crisis. Or a not being able to come to camp, that's a crisis. That's a huge crisis. What I want to talk about tonight is how you can handle the crisis. Either, either in a positive or how you can handle it in a negative way. Did you even know that there's two ways you can handle the crisis? It can be positive or it can be negative. And the outcome is based on our reaction. So, does anybody know the first crisis that happened in the Bible? You should, but if you don't, it's okay. Anybody? Anybody? It's hard not talking to a bunch of people, but that's okay. Because I'll give it to you. In Genesis chapter 2, I think you may know where I'm going with this. Then Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest therefore thou shalt, truly die. Thou shalt surely die. So right here, 
you know, God brings man and woman into the garden. He tells the man, you can eat anything in the garden. You can do whatever you want in the garden. Just don't eat of that one tree. One tree out of every other tree there. One tree. That's it. Now let's flip over to Genesis chapter 3 and I want to read you what happens. It's a little lengthy reading, so just bear with me for a minute. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So man, God had just told man not to eat of this fruit. But here they are, they've been enticed, and now they're in a crisis. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God 